I'm Ben Davis and I'm the author of The Suit Movement. Uh, now The Suit Movement is a book of mine, it's about a boy called Jordan. He is poorly, he meets another person in hospital called Brio who's also uh, sick and they agree to do as many nice things for people as possible over the course of a year. Uh, anytime someone needs help, they can't walk away, they have to step in and help as best they can. And they wanna see how the world changes uh, in that time. Jordan leaves hospital and gets better. He uh, sees a homeless man sort of being picked on by some kids. He gives him some soup that his mom gave him. Uh, and that snowballs into a huge thing called the soup move. Really, any story you write is an act of empathy because you're putting yourself in someone else's shoes and imagining life through their eyes. Um, the soup movement though was a little bit different in that I was writing about things that I had really no direct experience of. Thankfully, you know, I've not directly experienced having cancer, I've not directly experienced homelessness. So it required a bit of research and a lot of empathy to think about, you know, people in these situations. Particularly in the case of homeless people, I think we've all been guilty of thinking of homeless people just being one certain type of people when in reality they're all individuals they've all got into that situation for vastly different reasons with the character of harry i wanted to get across that he had various reasons how he ended up in that position and that he'd done things wrong um, and he recognized that but that you know he is a, a human being and we all will we all mess up uh, and, you know, I wanted to get across with all the homeless characters that they all had different reasons. And to be honest, it's not something I really thought about. My, my only thought when I wrote the book was I wanted to write a, an engaging story that, that entertained people. And, you know, that touched on some important issues, but I never thought that it would cause any social action. I was just, it never occurred to me. Uh, but since it's come out, you know, I've had emails from people saying it's inspired them to go out and do stuff for charity, to do stuff like little things like, you know, litter picking and stuff like that. I mean, I even had letters from the school in Greece, uh, you know, and they'd all done things there, you know, to help out local homeless charities and things like that. And it's just amazing that, that what happens in the book with it, the soup movement spreading around the world has actually happened in real life. And that's absolutely incredible. And it's not something that I ever, in my wildest dreams, thought would happen and uh, it's absolutely amazing and I get a bit teary just thinking about it. Really the, the suit movement is, the, one of the central themes of it is how empathy can change the world. Um, you start off small and it's like a snowball, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and I wanted to get across, I think I say this in the opening letter in the story, is that you know you can look at the big problems in the world and you can feel like you can't do anything about it. I've felt like that myself before. But what I did was just think about what I can do in my immediate area, what little things I can do. And that only, not only makes you feel better about the world, it helps you know other people and then other people are gonna to wanna to help other people and it, and it goes on like that. And so in your own way, you are changing your world. And that's what I wanted to get across in the suit movement. You have no idea that sometimes the small things can become much bigger things. Uh, soup movement writing that sort of made me think about empathy a bit more uh, and think about how I can become, uh, you know, be, make the world a bit of a nicer place um, for those around me. Uh, the, the resolution that I can that immediately springs to mind is to be a bit more understanding when certain people are misbehaving, not mentioning any names, but my son is one of them, and my dog, and you might be able to hear thrashing around in his crate, is another. Sometimes you have to understand that there might be reasons for them, their bad behaviour. They might be bored, they might be something going on that they're upset about. And it's important to, in my son's case, you know, sit down and talk. In the dog's case, you can't really talk to him, but you sort of have to figure out what's going on. Because it's not always that they're just doing stuff just to annoy me personally. <laughs> so I have to try and understand that a wee bit more. So that's my empathy resolution. I think one of the changes he wanted to see would have been people being more empathetic or helpful towards others. Well, a mitzvah that I did in class was when people didn't have equipment, I would give them glues, rulers, pencil, pens and pencils. Another little mitzvah that, were, um, that we were doing in our class was one of the boys always put the laptops away 
or everyone else at the end of the lesson? Um, at the end of the year, students dropped in thank you notes to some of the teachers, including our library. And some people um, paid for people's meals and drinks when people didn't come and afford them. And on top of all that, we also raised money for the Ukrainian appeal and we stopped, uh, and we filled stockings with sweets and chocolate to, for the people in Sandy Bears, the Sandy Bears charity. And we've also donated money and food to the homeless charities around our school. One small thing that we could do, we could pick up people's litter that we find on the floor and try and cut it into a bin. A good place is national parks. This can include parks, beaches, landmarks. Um, and you can also make sure that you pick up, you know, like you put your own rubbish in, your, in the bin at your own house and not leave it lying around. And in the streets. So think what you can do and have an excellent Empathy Action Month!